Should I talk about this? It's problematic. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the rape scene in The Fountainhead. Why would Ayn Rand put that scene there? I mean, people would be much more open to her ideas if she hadn't included a rape scene in her book. So why did she do it? Well, before we get into any of that, let's just give some context to the people who are not super familiar with the scene. Basically, in The Fountainhead, there is a scene in which Dominic Franco invites Howard O'Rourke to come to her room and fix her fireplace. And after the second time he visits her to fix her fireplace, he ends up raping her. Now, there is a lot of debate about whether this was rape or not, mostly because Dominique had a crush on Howard, even though she acted like she didn't like him. Also because she keeps dropping hints to him that she might be interested in him physically, like she's fixated on his body for some reason. Don't believe me? Well, if you read page 210, you're gonna get the first hint. And I'm gonna read it so you can get an idea. This is what Dominic is thinking about how our work. So in this scene, Dominic is at some event, but she's all the time she's thinking of our work secretly. And this is what she says. As she thought with a vicious trail of what these people would do if they read her mind in this moment, if they knew that she was thinking of a man in a quarry, thinking of his body with a sharp intimacy as one does not think of another's body, but only of one's own. And that's not all. On page 213, things get really thirsty. This is what it says. Okay, so this is what uh, Dominique tells Howard when she invites him to come over and fix her fireplace. She says, hello, I have been thinking of you, she said softly and stopped then added, her voice flowing in the same tone of compelling invitation, because there's a bit of a dirty job to be done at my place. Would you like to make some extra money? And obviously, <laughs> Howard Rourke is like, yes. He says, certainly Miss Franken. Then on page 215, while Howard is fixing the fireplace, Dominique is basically leering at him while he's working. It's like thirsty much. She approached him and stood silently over him. She had never stood so close to him before. She looked down at the smooth skin on the back of his neck. She could distinguish single threads of his hair. She glanced down at the tip of her sandal. It was there on the floor. An inch away from his body. She needed but one movement, a very slight movement of her foot to touch him. She made a step back. Whoa. But that day nothing happens. Har comes back again on a different day to finish the job, if you know what I mean. And by that I mean to finish fixing the fireplace. And then on page 219, the rape happens. But I'm not gonna read any of that. Instead, I'm going to read you what it says on page 220. And this is what Dominique is thinking while the rape is happening. This is, this is what she's thinking of. It says, it was an act that could be performed in tenderness as a seal of love or in contempt, as a symbol of humiliation and conquest. It could be the act of a lover or the act of a soldier violating an enemy woman. He did it as an act of scorn, not as love, but as defilement. And this made her lie still and submit. One gesture of tenderness from him and she would have remained cold, untouched by the thing done to her body. But the act of a master taking shameful, contemptuous possession of her was the kind of rupture she wanted. She had wanted. So she wanted him to do this to her in this way. She didn't want tender love making. He wanted her to take her. That's Dominique for you. <laughs> Okay, so this is what Dominique is thinking after the incident and after Howard has left. She turned the light on in the bathroom. She saw herself in a tall mirror. She saw the purple bruises left on her body by his mouth. She heard a moan muffled in her throat, not very loud. It was not the sight, but the sudden flash of knowledge. She knew that she would not take a bath. She knew that she wanted to keep the feeling of his body the traces of his body on hers, knowing also what such a desire implied. Okay, we need to talk about this. First of all, in real life, this would definitely be rape because she fought and tried to stop him and he did it anyway. And obviously, rape is wrong. Real life is not literature. In real life, most women are not like Dominic. Most women do not have fantasies about something like this happening to them. And even if some women have 
rape fantasies, it should stay as a fantasy. Now let's talk about this some more. In this story, Dominique wanted this to happen to her. She wanted Roar to dominate her because she's not a normal woman. She's a very tormented woman who likes to punish herself because she hates the world she lives in. And honestly, to explain her state of mind is a whole other conversation. So I would just encourage you to read or reread the book to try to understand her better. But in this case, we only need to know that Dominique wanted it, which is why Ayn Rand included this sex scene in the story. In fact, Ayn Rand commented on the subject in real life. She speaks about this in the book Letters of Ayn Rand. On page 22, she responds to a fan that had inquired about the subject with the following. I am afraid that you have misunderstood the relationship of Rourke and Dominique in a very improper way. You write as if you thought that the lesson to be derived from it is that a man should force himself on a woman and that she would like him for that. But the fact is that Rourke did not actually rape Dominique. She had asked for it and he knew that she wanted it. A man who would force himself on a woman against her wishes would be committing a dreadful crime. What Dominique liked about Rourke was the fact that he took the responsibility for the romance and for his actions. So there you have it. Iran did not condone rape. She was trying to communicate other ideas about love and Dominique, her character and her relationship to Rourke, but she was definitely not trying to glamorize rape. Well, at least that's how I understand it now. If you have other thoughts, let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching. This was fun. I mean, not talking about rape, but you know, talking about Ayn Rand. Uh, yes, you know what I mean. I hope you enjoy my amateur analysis of Ayn Rand's very talked about sex scene. Anyways, goodbye and thank you for watching.